Welcome to another episode of 2debate.eu, your favorite debating podcast and the best debating podcast of the universe, according to Sebastian. Isn't that true? How are you doing today? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, absolutely is the first point about it's true. the first absolutely podcast true. in the now universe. I completely, yeah. And how I am, well, I still have teeth, so I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> or lucky. <laughs> or lucky, yes, I guess so. We talked about it in the past, but car mechanics and doctors are, are areas where I feel completely ignorant uh, about. And I feel, in the case of healthcare and doctors, I felt really very, very vulnerable. For the car, well, you know. Well, maybe, 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 maybe you, should, you should have a video recorded of your, your teeth being drilled, and then you can... I think it's such a horrible video. We would need to censor it. It would not be accepted <laughs> on any video streaming website. And yes, thank you. You, you. you you threw a line at me so that we could do a transition with today's motion. I don't know how our listeners will see the connection, but here it is. What is the motion today? Tell me. Um, to put it more serious, it is about um, a video that was quite shocking recently. If you haven't uh, been under a rock, you heard about the events in New Zealand, uh, where there was a massacre in actually several mosques, right? Two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, right? He actually managed to drive the few kilometers which separated the second mosque from the first one. And it's only at the second mosque that... Uh, uh, a bystander or a worshipper who was around first threw a credit card machine at him, at the attacker. Uh, yeah, I read all the details. And then uh, tried to shoot back with one of the guns that the terrorist had left behind him. But unfortunately, there was no bullets. Uh, but it scared him away, apparently. And a few minutes later, the police intercepted him. But he had still already killed 49 people and then a 50th died at the hospital. What was very unique about that terrorist act was, aside from that it was a terrorist act that killed a lot of Muslims, often in the news we hear the other way around, uh, but was uh, was very unique about it was that the, that the guy doing it designed it almost for virality. So he, he wrote a, a very lengthy pamphlet that not only explained his motivation, but almost gave like a handbook of sorts what to, what to do. Um, and he, he used a, a action camera to record himself and it looked just like an action shooter game and it was shared on social media live streams and uh, um, kicked off a frenzy of reshares and people watching it, which I'm, I'm going to be honest here, in itself is very disturbing. It tells us something about human nature. I find that people watch live streams of people being shot and reshare this and whatnot. But uh, that's a different different discussion, I guess. So this is, this is the backdrop on which we uh, decided to have a debate this week. Um, so even though we were joking in the beginning, actually the topic I feel is quite sensitive and, and serious. And the motion today that we lead to is suppressing the Christchurch shooting video, which then happened. New Zealand, it turns out, has laws that allow New Zealand's authorities to block content. And that includes possessing and sharing of content uh, at quite steep um, consequences, I have to say. 14 so, years in jail. Yeah, can, years in jail as a maximum risk. sentence that can happen to you. The New Zealand authorities decided to block this video. And our motion today is suppressing the Christchurch shooting video is an illegitimate act of censorship. As usual, we flipped a coin to know who goes first and who goes second and who's against and who's for the motion. So I, Sebastian, will be against that motion. Uh, I will... S you will say it is legitimate. Yes, that's correct. Oh my god, I had a heart attack for a I second. I know how that feels. You do that to me all, all the time. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, okay, yes, I will be against the negation of it. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, double negative is a bitch, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the double negative. Um, yeah, so, so I will defend the censorship and you will be against it. No, the no, other way around. Other way you around. will defend... You god, will you, you shock me every two seconds now. Ah, Ah, we should ban Dirk from debating yeah. and having podcasts. Yeah, let's have a debate over okay. this. But uh, um, yeah, you you defend the censorship, and censorship. I will be against it. Yeah, well, yes. as you let's usually are. Oh, sure. All right, <laughs> let's do this. Okay, let's do this. 
Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Who wants to promote terrorism? And I don't say this in uh, as a joke. I, I would suspect that a significant proportion of those who would want to watch such a horrible video may actually be more likely to commit criminal acts. I am worried. I am worried that by allowing those extreme videos to circulate, we encourage a few others, even just one person, even just one other person, to go from fantasizing about killing people to actually doing it. And we saw how one person alone could kill 50 people. That video provides no extra informational value. And I know that for a reason, because I watched it. I specifically watched a short section of it. It was extremely blurry. Uh, I guess it was pixelated on purpose. And honestly, there was nothing much to be gained from it, at least not from an information uh, standpoint. It's also important, that's my third point, important to distinguish between news and propaganda. In this case, this video is not shot by a news cameraman or a victim or a bystander. It's shot by the extremist himself. What's more, it was clearly his intention to share the video since he was streaming it live on Facebook. So there was a desire from a terrorist to have the most widest appeal and there's as a result, an even more uh, stronger reason to censor that propaganda. Also, fourth point, all countries are censoring, all countries over the planet are censoring some type of content, whether we like it or not. So we should not, we should not act completely surprised. Examples in Germany or in France, everything to do or topics related to do with the Holocaust are sensitive. There are laws regulating what you can do or cannot do, which items you can sell related to Nazi Germany or not, in both France and Germany. Most countries have laws banning the dissemination of terrorism propaganda. And this is the case here. This is terrorism propaganda. It is not news again. Such decisions are not of censorship, are not taken lightly. Why? It took three days. It took three days in New Zealand for that video to be censored. And this shows that it's not something easy to decide on. I'll go back as to what the chief censor of New Zealand, as he's called, actually said in my uh, next segment of three minutes. But overall, as you can see, there's many reasons why that specific video was not an illegitimate act of censorship. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his argument. So in the wake of the events in Christchurch, I've seen reports that claim that the video in question has been shared and deleted at least 1.5 million times on Facebook alone. And at YouTube, they deleted one reshare per second. So when I said earlier, it's telling us something that I find quite disturbing. Here are the statistics to it. If anything, it shows a troubling development. We install big external systems now that are able to screen content at unprecedented scale and we force these systems to work for us. Or in this particular case, New Zealand forced them to work for them. So a global information economy all of a sudden decided to follow the censorship rules of a minor country and remove content that in many countries actually wouldn't have been illegal or censor worthy. No matter how despicable we find it, no matter how disgusting it is, uh, the fact of the matter remains, a lot of people apparently wanted to see it. Now, while I personally despise the video and I wonder what uh, uh, is wrong with people when Fox reshare it, it also can give you the creeps because the only difference between this video and countless others we may never learn about is that the Christchurch video suppression happened in a liberal democracy and therefore was visible to all of us. So we learned about the video, we know it exists. Um, I, I saw a statement done by the chief censor. Heck, the chief censor. This is a liberal democracy and they have a chief censor. I saw a statement done by this gentleman who even told us that uh, the video is shared to selected individuals who have a reason to request access. So, uh, to, to uh, truth be told, it's limited in its censorship. But uh, in, in general, there are probably plenty of videos just censored the same that we never learn about because the censorship happens outside outside of our attention and outside of uh, countries like New Zealand. It's just not spoken about, it's just censored all the same. Now, in our motion, we invite a distinction between illegitimate and legitimate acts of censorship. There are legitimate acts of censorship. I would argue this one does not fall into that category because in itself, it's not adding something new. You just said as much. 
but it's illustrating how despicable the act is. It may be even material people have a right to look at and realize for themselves it's not adding anything new. As long as we aspire to live in a free and uh, adult society, we sh can limit access to content like this. We shouldn't just remove it and censor it like New Zealand did. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. So the fact that you mentioned that it's not illegal uh, to view that video or disseminate it in other countries, for me, is not a good enough reason. Every democracy is entitled to decide what's best for its citizens. And we may have disagreements. We actually just had a debate on what the US or the European countries would do as regard to data protection or surveillance. And we have different viewpoints, but no one would say that the US or, Western or, or European countries are not democracies. So I think there's a spectrum, again, of how you want to view things. And that spectrum goes one way or, or, or another. In this case, as you mentioned, and actually just to be much more specific, academics have access to it if they want to. And, and this is what you, uh, you were referring to when the census department was saying that they had already received a number of applications to be exempted from uh, the Censorship Act. And that means that there will be a number of people, and that's mostly journalists, academics, researchers, analysts, will be granted access to the document without risking a criminal uh, investigation about them. So it is possible. And again, I think this shows that your argument around actually the fact that we don't censor it allow us to know it exists. Well, we're censoring it, at least in New Zealand, and we still know that it exists. So I don't think censorship is actually a remedy to hide things. I don't think it works that way. Things just are known. In fact, I'm going to make a very bold statement here. If you really want to see horrible material, in particular that one, you will always find a way. If you're really that determined, especially in today's age of the internet, being fairly decentralized still, hopefully, uh, you can go and find the content you want. But if you do that for yourself, even though it's censored at your own risks, let the masses be protected. Let's listen to the same chief censor who actually said, most right-thinking people will read this and not be harmed by it, or will watch the video, will not be harmed by that video, not be affected by it, not be influenced by it. It's not for them. It's not for you. It's for a target audience susceptible and vulnerable to that message. And that's exactly the point. We don't want to have that extra person, that just one person, who will go from a crazy fantasy to actually committing a crime. So it's not to ban information to the wide masses who can have access to it if they want to. They can go to an Australian website, they can go to another uh, website, or they can find it if they really want to. I want to conclude on this. And this is similar to what I said in a previous debate. The state is us. It's also here to enable our own welfare, to protect us. And some components of the population are either too young or too fragile in their minds so their lives could be significantly disturbed in viewing horrible material. I'm not talking just about influencing the wrong people. It's also being, being, being disturbed. If your child, if you're 10 years old, seeing that kind of video can be actually particularly disturbing psychologically. So overall, I think there's no other way than to be pro-censorship on that Christchurch shooting video. And I'm saying pro-censorship because I can't say the motion properly in what time I'm on. But Let's remember that the censorship is necessary in this case. Now, it's Dirk's turn. You convolute a lot of things. Let's just say this. I'm not against putting age limits on things. I'm not against banning live streaming it. I'm all for protecting our poor children about uh, accidentally seeing live killing on TV. That's not the same as censorship. Now let's see what happened here. In New Zealand, there was a horrific act of violence. It was live streamed. New Zealand stepped in and uh, censored the content and deemed it inappropriate and uh, deemed it illegal. Now the whole world acted on it. 
I actually tried to find the video in preparation of this debate. I'm not not because I wanted to watch it. I wouldn't have watched it. I just wanted to see if I can find it. And I don't agree. It's not easy to find that video. You have to put in a lot of energy. And you run into a lot of dead ends where you basically just look at the into a 404. And I, I failed on finding it. And I know my way around the internet. So uh, 4chan, I can tell you, has no copy of this video. Clearly, a, a regular Google search won't find you that video. If you try to go into the darknet, then either you really know who the video has or you're you're on your own devices. So it's basically, it disappeared globally. So what happened here is that New Zealand decided for the whole world that this video is inappropriate and not legal anymore. And the whole world followed and deleted the content. And I would say this is an act of censorship and as such, a, a cut down on personal rights. I do have a freedom to select my own media diet. I do have a right to make up my own mind. I do have a right to look at whatever I think is appropriate. You made the example that in Germany, the distribution of Nazi propaganda is not legal and is banned. You're right. It's banned in Germany. You just cross one border into one other European country and you can buy the stuff that is banned in Germany, by the way. And under certain circumstances, you can just go into a library in Germany and read the stuff there because it's not completely blocked from being available. It's just banned from being uh, publicly presented and it's banned from, uh, from public distribution. So it's not the same thing as what happened here. This is what in my book makes this act of censorship not legitimate. New Zealand went far beyond its own jurisdiction and we all followed it and therefore our civil rights are damaged and limited. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. In conclusion, I'll say three things. Number one, today in China, a lot of content is censored. Still, if you know your way around, you can still access this officially censored content. It's not necessarily easy, but it's possible. So my point is, if you really want it, you will find the censored content. The second point is, the video still exists. It's not deleted. It still exists officially. It's just that you have to request access to it, and you have to have a good reason for it. And that's why if you're a researcher or an academic, you can actually have access to it. And the third thing is, the risk is just too high. The risk is too high that you're going to influence the wrong people, whether it's the would-be criminals or teenagers or children who will be shocked in seeing some of this footage. So in conclusion, I think it's perfectly legitimate to censor that video. Dirk. Yes, let's protect children and still allow adults to access it, even if they don't have a legitimate reason. Who, is, who are you to judge if my reasons are more legitimate than yours? I may just want to make up my mind if this video is really that much of a game changer as some claim. I may want to compare the articles I read to reality. I may want to see what this guy was trying to transport and then make my own judgment call on it. I'm a free citizen. I have a right to do that. And I feel limited in my right to access information by acts like this. It's limiting my freedom of choice, how I want to design my media diet. Uh, suppressing that shooting video as legal as it may be in New Zealand, for the rest of the world at least, and I would argue even for New Zealand, it's an illegitimate act of censorship. <laughs> did, did you have to bend your mind, as you say? Uh, a bit. So what would have been the strongest argument you would have brought forward in my position? Because we had the natural stances just reversed. You were arguing my position, I were arguing your position. What, would, what argument did I leave out? I think there's one thing, which is... Maybe one thing that that I I would have mentioned in, in addition is the, always this difficulty in defining the red line. Where is the red line? Where is it propaganda versus news? You know, who is there to define what is information versus propaganda? Mm -hmm. It's such a, a such a malleable topic that can be e easily swayed one way or another by a politician. So this is what bothers me. Like your definition is not my definition of what is informational value. I may find informational value in actually looking at how the killer has proceeded 
because maybe as a citizen, I want to know what to do if I am faced ever one day against someone like this. Where should I hide? How should I... I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm inventing. Obviously, I'm not saying I would watch it for that reason myself. But I, I can see a number of cases where I would disagree on what is information or not. Mm -hmm. Who is entitled to tell me what is information or not? Yeah. Uh, so I, I would struggle with that. Actually, I'm thinking, I know you probably will not bother, but I... Let's see if I bother enough. But let me send an email to the chief censor and say, hey, you know what? We've got a podcast. We debated about this. And out of information for enlightening us in our, in our debate, I want to, we want to see if we can have access to the to the uh, to the content. We're not journalists, but we're we're amateurs in doing this, and we want we're researching the topic and we're discussing. And you can look at all the debates we've had. They touch about freedom. Let's see. And if they say no, then your case is made for the debate. That's right? an that interesting is, way uh, to move forward. Of concluding, yeah. right? Better than votes in this case. Yes, I agree. Let's try that. I'll draft an email. Yeah. yeah, very cool. I would have made an additional argument on your behalf, and that is the personality rights of those being shot. So we, we didn't touch on this, but this guy, didn't he didn't just record, I don't know, people of interest, places of interest, his actions. He recorded how he killed people. And there is not much that is more personal than you dying. And by by sharing a video of your violent death with the world, this is an act of unbelievable uh, intrusion into privacy. And you basically you basically kill the personality rights of these people once more after they've been shot. And so, this is what basically would make me go like, yeah, somebody acting on behalf of the victims, limiting the distribution of that video is an act of decency, it's an act of respect, it's an act of uh, um, avoiding people just watch, uh, watching violent porn and practically doing harm to these families and people just once more by distributing that video. What about pixelating the, the victims' faces so you don't know who it is? I'm not sure if the, that would be a possible uh, way around this. Yeah, maybe. I would not be against that. For me, that would not be censorship. Uh, this is this is indeed the the freedom conflicting against each other, right? The respect for privacy and the and the mourning of the families versus the freedom of having access to all information, and the and the and where their meat is pixelating. For me, the victims' faces, which is usually done by the mainstream press when there is another attack or a war or whatever. I can imagine though that uh, that families will tell you it's it's violating them just whether you pixelate it or not and it's painful for them to watch whether just by knowing that the person being pixelated in that video was your your dad or whatnot so i'm not i'm not sure um I, as i said for me the main argument would be to say hey it's out of respect for the victims and their families and this is a very personal and disturbing video to be around and once you allow it to be distributed it's around forever and ever and ever it's and true. and not everybody is watching that for for uh, information purposes there are there are tons of people that will would watch it for i don't know uh just the excitement of watching somebody die there are whole forums on the internet de dedicated to real world videos of people dying I would have had still an issue with the respect notion because in that case you could extend this to anything else. You have a billion point, 1.2 billion Muslims on, on the planet. Are they pleased of seeing, I don't know, documentaries about bacon or about, you know, pig stalls or whatever? And, and yeah, my it's point not is that, quite the same thing, right? With well, somebody hey, being killed, it's not the same like watching hey, bacon. You're, 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 you're doing my point here. My point is definitions. You say that's not the same thing. They could say it's the same thing. You're offending me. It's out of respect for my religion, my beliefs. Uh, you, you, you could argue decency of you know my relative, my family relative's life being seen. Oh, sorry, them being killed on the video for me is the same as being offended my religion. I'm, I'm not saying this is the case. I'm not saying this is the case for me. But I, I could see the, the, the lines being blurred uh, uh, and extending. Saying, yeah, well, but uh... I don't want to see this content. I tell you the difference. If you watch a video of bacon, you're not violating the bacon's personality rights, and you're you're not you know don't have a way of asking the bacon for consent. And if you could ask the bacon for consent, it couldn't give you an answer. The, well, you can't ask the dead person's consent either, can you? But you can ask the family's per, uh, consent, but, and, and, I, and I, I they don't have a right on the on the image of the of the dead person. But you could, least. and I I doubt that they would say, yeah, please let's distribute it over the globe. I mean, Fair sorry, enough. it's like it's not the same. <laughs> 
fair enough. But again, like in, uh, as far as I know, pixelating or blurring the face of the face, as we know for Street View, for instance, blurring the license plates of people is enough. Yeah, there are plenty of examples out there where videos and pictures of people circulate despite the families disagreeing with it. And uh, it was just enough to pixelate it to be even sent on broadcasted on national TV. So I, I know that that is probably a, a source of tension. One more thing, which is not directly related. It's more of yeah, it's a, a, a comment about uh, the value of images. I, I don't almost don't watch TV anymore. Uh, I mostly watch video content on YouTube. And I realize the rare cases when I do watch TV, I'm really shocked and how poor the journalism is, especially the images chosen. Very often, it could be completely replaced by radio. The images are completely useless. And if anything, if there's a medium when you're using TV or video, well, make it take advantage of it. In this case, you cannot show the video of a killing on, on with audio footage only, like the actual you know, location and what, what, what actually happened is could be interesting, I'm not saying it is interesting in this case. That's a different debate, but I will, I, I'm actually a bit, uh, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with the, with the use of images in, in TV, at least in, the, in a few TV media that I, I have encountered lately. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, it's uh, especially in the news media, but it, there is a, it depends on what you're watching. So there are notable exceptions. Um, so it depends on what channel you're watching, what show you're watching, but in general I tend to agree. Which is why my media diet when it comes to news and politics is almost exclusively podcast these days. Uh, not, not a surprise to you and I'm our listeners. to the converted. <laughs> All right, so this was an uneasy debate for us because we, the, the, for our listeners' entertainment, we actually discussed this very topic um, and then said, listen, let's make a debate out of it. And you were, ha ha, I'm flipping the coin. And a moment <laughs> later, we were like, crap, <laughs> worst case scenario, because we were seriously disagreeing over, over the, the, this case and then found each other on the opposite side we would have picked for ourselves. So was very interesting to do that exercise. How much did you really argue your point? It was mind-bending, you said, but how much did you really feel you 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 understand the discussion, the argument and the position? Oh, no, 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 I'm fully behind my arguments. I, 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 I will not reject anything. I just think overall the trade-off is just too big. That's maybe the thing. And I feel that the definitions are too, are too difficult to define, to, to establish. But I do, I do consider that there is very little informational value in that specific specific video. So, no, no, I it, I was trying to find good arguments, but I I don't reject anything I've said. Yeah, that's why maybe I would not ha I would not have even if you had given me your argument, which is saying out of decency, I would not have used that one, for instance. Right? Every time I try to use arguments, I'm I'm comfortable with defending, and which I think are hopefully strong enough. So let's see if it was strong enough. Our listeners can tell us, right? They can go to the page and give a thumbs up if they agree with it was illegitimate. I, at some point, if I say it often enough, I can say it almost as good as homeopathy, which I learned. I was about in. to say it. I was just about to say it. You read my mind. I was about to challenge you. And <laughs> yeah, illegitimate. I, I learned it. Um, yeah, so if you think it was an illegitimate act of censorship, uh, then vote thumbs up. And that's voting from my side. If you say it was legitimate and maybe even necessary and... Uh, well, maybe even say it's not censorship or whatnot. Uh, if you basically agree with Sebastian's position, that is, then vote thumbs down. And if you want to hear about homeopathy, just go back to our archives, because this is one of our very first debates, probably the 10th debate or so. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the debates we are still embarrassed about because we actually agree that it's total and utterly nonsense. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, we've done it and it's in the archive and you can, you can just give it a listen if you want to. All right. Thank you very much for listening and until next time. Thank you. Bye. And I actually think, I, I wonder if I, at the end of my segment, I said the, the opposite of what I'm supposed to defend in terms of like suppressing is, or I don't remember what I said, if it's is or is not. <laughs> I just realized I don't know what I said. Hey, you, you pro-censorship. Just keep that in mind. Pro-censorship. Yeah, I'm pro-censorship. That's so tough for me. <laughs> 
trying to channel my inner Sebastian here. Oh, sorry, I can watch your mind bending in this debate. <laughs> I, I think I heard it creaking every once in a while. Hey, anyway, flip of the coin. Yep, flip I of the coin. It. Yes, <laughs> me too. 